Hello, everybody. Good evening and welcome to Ascension Paraguay. This is the FIBA America Cup qualifiers. It's game day two, Group B, and the rematch between Paraguay and Brazil. You can see Brazil and Uruguay up at the top of the standings after their wins over Paraguay and Panama respectively. And it's the same matchups tonight only on the other home court. Rogelio Rubens, uh, the head coach of Brazil in this matchup in this window and well he's had a a successful start to proceedings winning at home the big number putting up the big number on paraguay uh, winning that one 108 to 43 and uh, they'll be looking for the sweep it would take something extraordinary turnaround uh, there are some different faces in the brazil lineup tonight uh, but still have plenty of uh, familiar faces, World Cup players like Georgine, Georgine and Lucas Diaz in this team. And uh, they will be starting as favorites, big favorites against Paraguay, who haven't played at the FIBA Americas Championship since Mar de Plata in 2011. So that just kind of illustrates how complicated uh this is going to be i think for for paraguay they are in the qualifications and trying to make the most of it but they're going up against deeper a deeper more talented brazil team but this time uh, they will be at home and will at least have the advantage of being on their home court in these familiar surrounds In that first game for Brazil, they had Iago. He's not playing tonight. Iago Santos had the 22 points to lead the scoring. Five rebounds, five assists. Just an all-around outstanding effort. Also, Lucas Diaz, who is here tonight, he had 16. Of course, Lucas Diaz also, uh, just before the start of the season in the FIBA Intercontinental Cup, hit the game-winning shot against Telecom Baskets Bond. Uh, for them to lift the title, uh, talking about Real, uh, his his team in Brazil. Anyway, we'll talk more about that in just a second after the national anthems.
Okay, the national anthems have been played and the coaches meet again in midcourt. Brazil, obviously huge favorites in this game. And what I was talking about with Lucas uh, Diaz was Diaz was uh, his game-winning shot for Ceci Franca basket at the FIBA Intercontinental Cup. And uh, Gio Jean played in that team as well uh, before leaving to play in Germany for Ulm. Um, so big honor for them. Anyway, from Venezuela, Daniel Garcia, Christian Pyth from Ecuador, and Franco Anselmo Crivo Capic from Argentina getting to referee tonight. And we will get a look at the starting fives for both teams. For Brazil, Elio Corazza, Danilo Fusaro, Lucas Diaz, Georgine De Paula, and Gabriel Galvani with uh, a whole assortment of players coming off the bench, including Cardoso, whose uh, sister plays as well. Here we go, Hel Helenio Rubens. The head coach. And Paraguay also being put through their paces here. Franco Benitez, Vincenzo Occipenti, Edgar Riveros, Riveros, Alejandro Parota, and Adolfo Lopez in the starting five. Barrero, Ruiz, Martinez, Mercado, Sequeira, Lopez all coming off the bench. And the head coach, Alberto Cano. And what goes through your mind when you're in the situation where you've already coached against a, a giant, a team that makes regular appearances in Olympic Games and FIBA Basketball World Cups and challenges for titles in America Cups, and you're just trying to qualify. And this is the team that you have to go up and face for your qualifying games and uh, it is not easy I mean it's uh, what do you do you get blown out in the first meeting how do you approach the second all you got to do is play you got to play every single possession 24 second shot clock try to execute and worry about yourselves and don't worry about Brazil Brazil I think for them they want to come out and have a good time tonight win for the second game and get out and and really uh take a big step towards qualification for the FIBA America Cup. So three teams from each of the groups will qualify for the America Cup, which is going to be in Nicaragua. Can't wait for that one. So you've got in this group, again, Uruguay and Panama in second and third place, respectively, behind Brazil. Uruguay also starting off with a win. And I think pretty much everybody anticipates those three teams making it and not Paraguay, but you got to play the games. And you, Paraguay will also have games against Panama and against Uruguay. And who knows? Sometimes players are available, sometimes they're not. Sometimes you have the game of your life. Sometimes. You're just overmatched, and that was definitely the case in the first game when they were on the back foot from the very beginning of the game, outscored 24-10 in the first quarter in Sao Paulo, and then by halftime it was 45-18, to game set and match. And then just to add to the misery, Brazil outscored them 30-12 to in the third quarter, but you can't tell somebody not to compete. They've got to play, and the onus is on you to get better. So good evening, everybody. Good afternoon. Good morning. Uh, we are in Asuncion, Paraguay for the FIBA America Cup qualifier between Brazil and Paraguay. And 
Zero Gene gets in, and let's see here. Yep, Zero Gene De Paula gets the first bucket for Brazil, and they lead two nothing over Paraguay, who again want to focus on their execution, try to try to anticipate, see if they can get better. Enough. They turn it over mid court, and already Brazil wreaking havoc. And at least this time they survive. Well, bounce pass not there, so he takes it back outside and they miss from deep. And Carazza gets it over to Giorginio De Paula. And now Lucas Gias. One of the more accomplished players again in this Brazil national team setup. So the pass back to Jorginho De Paula, and he hits the three pointer. You know, having a solid first season in Germany with Ratio Farm Ulm, where he replaced Iago de Santos and Bruno Caboclo, two Brazilian national team stars who helped Ulm win the German title last season. How do I turn it over again to midcourt? Let's see if they pay the price. Danilo Fusaro has it. Spins. Goes up with the left hand and scores. And it's a quick 7-0 lead for Brazil. And timeout has been called by Paraguay. So let's go down to the bench. So coming out of the timeout, Paraguay come in and almost have it stolen. Elio Corazzo. Now Corazzo is going to beat number 15 from Paraguay to the basketball. Adolfo Lopez. And you just see the, the golf and talent and experience already and also the knowledge of what happened in the first game weighing heavily on the team from Paraguay looking for something to lift their spirits Jorginho. 
who did it. Number 25, Gabriel Galvinini. And Diaz gets his first bucket just with uh, two points. is 9 nothing in favor of Brazil. Paraguay, how long will it be before we get to see the first bucket? Hopefully it will be on this possession. There's the entry pass. Nice pass again. And at least Franco Benitez has free throws coming. Rubens was the coach of the Cecily Franca team that won the title, won the FIBA Intercontinental Cup, and uh, I think it's a great honor for him to be leading the senior team now here in this window, and we'll see what happens in the future for him regarding that. But you often see that with countries who uh, have – Oh, look at that. Who have coaches that coach both clubs and countries. And yes, this, this pretty much says it all about how things have gone in this window for Paraguay. And, wow, good job. First strike uh, knocks it out from Danilo Fusaro. Franco Benitez takes his time and makes the first. So Paraguay, Paraguay fans, give him the first cheers. Their team gets on the board. There's Lucas Gias. They pass it back out. Now they penetrate. They get it around. Jorginho DePaul are missing. And a bump. And the foul called, so. See, Franco Benitez gonna be 29 years of age, one of their main players. Needs to get it going here for them. Keep that scoreboard ticking over. Edgar, Edgar Riveros inbounded the basketball and Brazil almost stole it, then it went off of went off of the uh, Paraguayan. So not the start Paraguay we're looking for. Here's Jorginho. He falls down after being fouled by Riveros. Rubens, for his part, what he wants to do is just make sure his team is executing. Run the plays. And yeah, but he had missing a couple from, from deep. Uh, Paraguay looked for, again, their first field goal, their first bucket from the floor, from open play. And again, another miss. This is from Benitez on the baseline. Good job. Oh. And looks like uh, Danilo Fusado might have been a little fortunate to get that call to go his way. Raza stops, swings it, and the pass, Gias missing. And it's kind of challenging if you think about it for Brazil because they want to play 
as competitive a basketball as they can, and it's hard for them to really execute at the level that they want to if, you know, they're not facing that opposition. So maybe they let up, and then it impacts the overall game. But that was a good steal from Caraza. No look past. And Gios has it knocked out of his hands by Jorge Martinez. Gabriel Galvanini helped up after being bumped down low, so he now goes to the free throw line. He's uh, dyed his hair different color, and you can see he is stepping up to the line now, trying to get his first points of the game, having missed his first four field goals. And he does indeed stops the rot his first point of the game and stretches brazil's lead here early 10 to 1 he had seven points and seven rebounds and three assists in the first game plays at flamingo and has played in a host of other other games played uh, seven america's qualifiers for brazil for the fiba basketball world cup and played in two qualifiers for the for the FIBA America Cup 2022 when Brazil got to the final before falling to Argentina spinning hooping and scooping and this time the foul has been called Carazza So Alejandro Peralta going to the line. Peralta, 32 years of age. At six points in the first game, Carazza goes out. Alexei Borges comes in. He misses both. It's been a good uh, window for the Portuguese-speaking nations, in fact. Port, uh, Brazil winning, as you would have expected them to. Portugal got a win on opening night. Here is the penetration, and Gabriel fouled once again. Also, uh, Cape Verde. And doing what they had to do to get three wins in the AfroBasket qualifiers. It was at Angola getting a couple wins, but they fell to Tunisia. That was in their last game. Nice bounce pass. Oh boy, just the finish, the finishing product just isn't quite there. Now they get the turnover, get something in transition, maybe. And good layup, getting ahead and putting it up and in. The first field goal of the game for Paraguay, scored by Rodney Mercado. Gios gets it outside, Fisado. And again, a chance to push it quickly, and this is where they want to be. They want to be running, getting in transition. But they've got to finish. There's no use going down trying to set up and if you can like your chances better getting in the open floor and going down. And here they are. 
trying to create some chaos. Jero Jean De Paula, however, can thrive, can play at that game as well. And he now will go to the line. Galvanini almost having it stolen. Gabriel Galvanini. But Giorgino De Paula cleans up the mess and gets in. And look at the fans. They went, they, they saw potential steal, fast break, suddenly turn into a three point play opportunity for the Brazilians. Okay, so we're going to have some changes now. Gabriel Galvanini is going out of the game. And coming in is Adolfo Lopez. Excuse me, Marcio Santos comes in and uh, Jorge Segura comes in for Paraguay, replacing Adolfo Lopez. Seventeen to three, Brazil on top of Paraguay, whose uh, struggles offensively continue in this game, just like the first game when they were blown out. And that was a nice little play, getting the crowd going. Mercado once again got four points now for the home team, giving them a little bit of hope. Alexi drifts. Passes and offensive foul, Gias, Lucas Gias. And Mercado, despite not going to his left hand, keeps it in the right, but was able to score. And that has to be encouraging for the coach. Uh, could be wrong, but maybe those are twin brothers. Got to love that, seeing the, the kids come out to the game. They just want to see some great basketball. Here is Paraguay moving it around, getting it down low. Oh, what a spin move and what a play from Franco Benitez. Thought for a moment he might pass it. And Paraguay waking up now, trailing by just 10 points. Well, that's uh, going up and putting your body on somebody, forcing them out of bounds. Martinez, but here he was making a good pass, and that was a Great spin from Franco Benitez. Franco Benitez, again, plays for San Jose in Paraguay. Had some incredible games, incredible results, and throughout the qualifiers whether it's been in the americas whether it's been in europe asia africa some definitely some some surprises maybe in the americas you point to cuba beating the united states soundly last night in havana martinez missing it from deep now quickly the other way coming in from the baseline they seal the baseline but spinning and turning, Guilherme Braga. So now he goes to the free throw line. Lucas Gias takes a seat. Braga is just 24 years of age, 1.98 meters in height, six feet, six inches tall, and 
has a very promising future. Plays with Franca in Brazil. And I'm trying to remember him actually from the FIBA Intercontinental Cup. Just double check and see if he was there because if he was, I don't think he played that much. Misses both, but the, look at that. The ball comes back to him, then he misses with the follow and another offensive rebound. This is the kind of stuff that will drive a coach crazy to give a team so many chances. Then they get it down low, and the bucket is scored this time by number three, Marcio Santos, who's just checked in. And almost a turnover. Ooh. And they've got the violation. They did not get it over in time. Ruben's being ruthless. So seven turnovers for Paraguay. So no, he was not. He was not in the. He played for Ceci Frank in the Basketball Champions League Americas, though. So, here is nice drive, Alexi. Stressing Brazil's lead. And that was a good aggressive play. Whistle blows. Juan Miranda whistle for the foul. Well, the free throw line is kind of the, the best opportunity for this Paraguay team to score right now. The only problem is they're not they're not taking advantage of it. Here they are. Well, just missed a couple. Had a three look and Sakura. And look at that. They steal it and they get it and they put it up and in. Rodney Mercado has been their best player so far. He's got six. I know. Excuse me. He's uh, that was Martinez. I was thinking that was. No, it's Mercado, so he's got six points. Uh, Paraguay go down like a sack of wheat. Yeah, that was Mercado scoring. So, yeah, he's got six points. Took it right away from Daniel Ferreira. So a little bit of life here for the Paraguayans. Granted, the, the reserves have come into the game for Brazil, but you got to take advantage of these moments. They've cut it to a 12-point deficit, and Rubens. Well, he is still sitting, still standing up, still coaching away. Some other fans coming into the game to check out proceedings. I've never, I'm trying to think if, uh, I don't think I've seen Paraguay play Brazil before, even though they did play the other night. I wasn't on the call for that one. Uh, but they definitely have some spark. Free throw is good. Calls for hope for the Paraguayans. Cutting it back to a 10 point game and Mercado already with eight points. A 
Alexei missing everything. And I tell you what, that is brutal. You have the ball. You run into the Brazilian, you lose it, you give up a three-pointer. Every, all the hard work that you've done just disappears. Just like that. Goes back to a 13-point deficit. So now you're going to hold it for the last shot. Hopefully, uh, if you're Paraguay, you're going to knock it down. Traveling. Gives it back to Brazil here in the final 1.4 seconds. So Fabrizio Ruiz travels. Alexei gets it off. But that is it for the first quarter. And they had some momentum before that late turnover. It's Brazil, however, uh, leading 25 to 12 over Paraguay. Now Brazil, six makes inside the arc, and uh, that was fast. Paraguay in dire need of some three, good three-point shooting. Here's a look back at the highlights. And Brazil just kind of doing what they wanted early on. Scored the, first, the game's first nine points before Paraguay got a free throw. And finally, Paraguay came to life, and it was primarily Mercado who was getting it done. That was probably their best play, and this was a very good finish. So we'll see how many minutes he'll be able to play tonight. Speaking of uh, Franco Benitez, he's got three points, but he also has two fouls, as does Adolfo Lopez. Well, if you want to get courtside 1891, scan in the barcode, get it into your smartphone, and then you've got it right at your fingertips wherever you are for video stream schedule scores for international basketball. So many events coming up that you want to watch and keep an eye on and you can anticipate certainly a busy summer of basketball coming up after the qualifiers and basketball champions league americas basketball champions league europe you can watch teams from you know, especially in international basketball, you got the FIBA Olympic qualifying tournaments, which will be big coming up this summer. And Brazil uh, will be hoping to, to make it back to the Olympics because they are participating. They will be up in Riga, the same group as Cameroon and Montenegro. So I would say a strong likelihood they would advance to the knockout phase, and then they would have to win two games against the teams from the other group. And the other group has Latvia, which is probably the favorite, considering how well they're playing right now. And then you've got Georgia and Philippines that will be in. And uh, Philippines kind of an unknown entity. It depends on who they're going to bring. Georgia, you pretty much know what you're going to get. And Georgia have had a tough window losing both of their games uh, this this time. So uh, a lot of basketball to watch on courtside 1891. Not just the qualifiers, although the qualifiers are fantastic. Several days of nonstop basketball, but also uh, the other tournaments coming up, the FIBA Olympic qualifying tournaments. There is a long shot. And how about the offensive rebound? And how about the rim protection from Daniel? But a foul was called. So 
So the basketball inbounded. Paraguay down 11. Offensive foul called on number 20, setting a pick. Alan Juarez. So again, another opportunity for Brazil to extend their lead. The second unit getting a good run here. Basketball in, inbounded to Santos. Marcio Santos gets in. Puts it up and in. That was an impressive turn and bucket. Uh, Marcio Santos, we did see he also played for Ceci Franca at the FIBA Intercontinental Cup. He was terrific. He was a young man, too, just 21 years of age. Promising future. Now quickly, Alexei, another of the players that was with Franca. You see the common trend here, Franca coach and a lot of Franca players. Here is a three-point shot and does not drop for Guilherme Braga. So Mercado goes back out of the game with eight points, which actually is a game high. Serginho De Paula has seven. And then this pass goes out of bounds. So five of you know, Paulo Barbosa, who we haven't seen yet, Five of the players and the coach, five of the Franca players and the coach, um, Helio Rubens from Ceci Franca here as a part of this Brazil national team playing in the opening window of the qualifiers for the America Cup. Three point shot is good. So they could use some more of that. Paraguay's, uh, Backup, Vincenzo Ocapinti comes in and, no, excuse me, he tra he started. He gets the first three. Marcio Santos misses it from deep. Look at that, a high arcing shot. He had just one point, the 24-year-old, in the opening game. So that's not like that's something that's continued. Ron told to tuck his shirt in, as was number 20, Alan Jorez. Jorginho tries to make the bounce pass, and it's kicked. So he decides to take another one, and this time he does knock it down. So the lead goes up 30 to 15, two and a half minutes into the second quarter. Torres sets the pick and driving in. Occupenti. Oh, wow, look at that. He's going to give the break out the gun show, and he's going to get to the line. Georgina. De Paula not impressed. Oh yeah. Yeah. Looked like the initial uh, 
reach. So 30 to 17, now make it 30 to 18. Kids having the palomitas and the stands. Enjoying the action so far. Lexi now brings it up. They got to go quickly. And that will not count because the tap came after the buzzer. So a chance again for Paraguay to close the gap to two points. You look at these guys from Brazil, and then you remember how many great players have come before them that are that kind of are ahead of them in the pecking order of making this national team for the big tournaments. And some of them were in the first game. They're not here tonight. But they're in the game when the game was played in Brazil. Speaking of Iago, especially, who now plays in the Euro League in Europe, having left Ulm. And a foul on Marcio Santos. They had Bruno Caboclo, who had also 12 points in that game. So 30 to 18. Okay, Pinty hit the first shot with the man running right in him. This time it was a better look, but it was short. Six and a half minutes remaining in this first half. The ball inbounded. They swing it over to the right. Ah, oh, boy. And the foul called. Could have had a three-point play. He'd made the shot. Wasn't really close, though. Franco Benitez. He'll still get back to the free throw line. Okay, we have a timeout on the court with 6.17 remaining in the first half. Let's go down to the bench. It's a Brazil timeout. Okay, free throw is coming for Paraguay is Franco Benitez. He's got six points already. Excuse me. Looking at the wrong page here. Uh, Franco Benitez with three points. And he makes the first. Takes its time and makes the second, much to the delight of the crowd. 
want to see a competitive game here. They want to see Paraguay win. I think that's probably uh, asking for too much, but 30 to 20, Brazil up, have not been able to pull away yet. Lucas Gias back in the game, however, and he backs his way down low, has the ball knocked out of his hands, but then he picks it up and s scores. Excuse me, that was that? Yeah, that was him. He made it, and then we had, no, it was Galvanini, apologies. I thought it was Lucas Diaz that scored. So they credited Galvanini with that. And the air ball, and here's Galvanini. They both got some dye in their hair. Here he is whipping the ball up to Lucas Diaz. Lucas Diaz touch pass to the corner. And then driving in and lots of fouling. So Guilherme Braga is going to go to the free throw line. Abreu. That's a pretty hard foul, to be honest. I mean, for this situation, yeah, I mean, Helio Rubens is saying, listen, this is a bit excessive. Let's, uh, let's not get carried away here with our fouls. One thing that's fouling to stop a shot is another thing that's completely landing on the opponent and swiping down on the basketball like that. I'm not sure who those gentlemen are, but I've got a sneaking suspicion they might be football players from the area that have come to watch from the local professional club. Missing, but Lucas Diaz keeps it alive. No, excuse me, it's Galvanini. It's really hard to se separate those two from with their hair the way it is. Here he is, Galvanini. Gabriel Galvanini turns, puts it up, and powers his way up. And it's back to a 15-point lead. Whistle blows and foul Brazil this time. So that's Danilo Fusaro. And more free throws for Paraguay. We're spending a lot of time going to the free throw line. These kids have not given up their role. They've got great seats, posting up with the Paraguay flag. And yes, of course, they're going to get on TV. First one is good. 35-21. They want to be within striking distance when they go to halftime. And you get the feeling that Brazil want to put some, create some separation, which is why the starters have come back into the game. Both free throws good. Okapenti. Danilo Fusaro loses it, then gets it over to Abreu. Here, let me, and oh, and Gabriel. Gabriel Galvanini turns. Look at this contact. It's knocked away. No, it's just a blocking foul. So, more free throws. Feels like Paraguay, ordinarily, you would want to shorten the game as much as possible and stay as close as possible during that time. But it seems like they're making this first half a lot longer. They're more than happy to get fouled, go to the free throw line. And that's where they're doing some damage. Nine of 13 at the line as a team. And Okapenti has come out and buried a three-pointer. He's getting to the line, making those. And it's back to an 11-point game.
Carranza. Danilo Fusaro, he misses. And a chance now to close to within single digits. Now we get the fans on their feet. Three-point shot. Right. That's what they wanted. He just didn't knock it down, but it was one shot. And that's it. Lucas Gias comes out. Now he misses. Oh, boy, look at that. The tap-in from Danilo Fusaro. So Brazil go back up by 13 points, less than four minutes to go in this first half. Good position. Oh, nice rejection, Fusado. Making plays on both ends of the court. That was a dangerous pass. Got away with it. Carazza gets it to Fusado, who's smacked as he gets into the lane. So Fasaro goes over to the bench just to make sure he's okay. Maybe a little bit dazed after the contact, and he will go to the line. And he's been Brazil's best player here for the last couple of trips. Bends the knees, puts it up, and scores. And misses the second, however. So with a 14-point lead, Brazil, three and a half minutes to go in this first half. Might have thought that they would be up even a little bit more. Hito Rubens playing his second unit a lot in this game. Now they're running some plays. Uh, the attempt way too short from Diego Barreto. And there's Lucas Diaz strikes with a three-pointer, and it goes up to 41-24, and all of a sudden it is a 17-point lead. So Alinho is heading over to the bench, Corazza, and timeout. Here with three of five remaining. Salinho dishing the ball off to his Brazil teammate, Lucas Diaz, for the three-pointer. Technical foul, so it's been called on Benitez. Not sure what that's about, what he said. Oh, offsetting technicals, Benitez and Galvanini, and that's why they haven't taken any free throws. Wow. Franco Benitez, I didn't see him move his pivot, but the referee did, and he turns it over. And I think, judging from the coach's reaction, he didn't see it either. Dump down low, and sure enough, alley oop. Cardoso checks into the game. So Cardoso's sister is the one that plays at the University of South Carolina and plays for Brazil's national team, the women. Unfortunately, had a costly 
technical. They came up short of qualifying for the Olympics. There he is getting the basketball. Elenio passes it up to Lucas Diaz. He gets blocked, but the basketball was already off the backboard, apparently. Forty-five, twenty-four. Look at this again. Let's see if he timed it well. Yeah, yeah. That was definitely goaltending, goal interference. Once it goes off the backboard, you can't interfere with it. And yet another foul. This one on Cardoso sends. Mercado back to the free throw line, and this is where they have spent most of the night. 15 free throws have been attempted by Paraguay so far. 15 for Brazil. So, yeah, a lot of free throws. And Mercado misses the first. Ouch. Not when you're down 21 points. You got to make these. He makes the second. There's a 20 point lead for Brazil. Two minutes remaining in the first half. Can. Oh, that was good defense. Knocking it away, but for uh, Danilo Frazado has been the man with the plan. He was able to get it back, and now Lucas Gias hits another three pointer. Uh, pass intercepted. Alenio avoids the turnover and three point shot. And just like that, Brazil open up a big league. Paulo Barbosa, another of the Sessi Franca players. 55 20, 51 25. Brazil in command. Alenio, no look pass. Oh, about that. Cardoso throws it down. Uh, Brazil getting to smile a little bit. This is only about a 10-point game, it feels like, a couple of minutes ago. And all of a sudden, Brazil have just raced ahead into a humongous lead. Almost up by 30 points. Here in the final minute of this first half. Oh, and he tries to pass it to the corner. Ball goes, he thought it was deflected out of bounds, but it wasn't. And Brazil can stretch their lead further. So Brazil called timeout. They want to set up another play here, make the most of this opportunity. Helio Rubens wants to do a good job, wants to get some execution. Let's go down to the bench.
So let's see what Rubens has drawn up here in, in the in the huddle, in the timeout. Alinho, Lucas Tias for three, makes another. And such a good perimeter shooter for such good size. And the lead is indeed now 31 points. So they've basically gone on about a 20 0 run. And now Cardoso forces the turnover. He's going to go in for the layup. A little finger roll. He's been good since coming into the game. Shot from midcourt. So disappointing finish to the first half. Paraguay were being competitive. But you got to keep it going. You can't switch it off. And in a way, Brazil switched it on. They lead it 58-25 at halftime. So much better numbers for Brazil, 14 of 17 inside the arc, 7 of 19 from deep. The only weakness is the free throw shooting where they're hitting 60%. But Brazil out rebounding Paraguay, three times as many assists and more than almost three times as many steals. Ocapente does have 10 points for Paraguay, but it's Diaz and his three point shooting that is at 15, that's a game high for Brazil. Here are the best plays in the second quarter. You see Marcio Santos turning into it, scoring with a little jump hook. Then you have Ocupente knocking down the only three for Paraguay to this point. Marcio Santos, these, uh, these bigs for Brazil, they can shoot it, that's for sure. Capinti again, getting a chance for a three-point play there. Foul called. Gabriel Galvanini. Kind of playing some bully ball here. Getting it deep and going it hard at the Paraguayan. It was hard to complain with Alinea's passes. That was between the legs. Look at that. Lucas Diaz, a rare miss for him, but but also was down there for the tap in. Lucas Diaz again with that three pointer as they went on the big run. Then the alley oop to Cardoso. And Diaz once again with another long one. And it's just one-way traffic here at the end of the first half as Brazil just kind of pulled away for a decisive lead. It's going to take a minor miracle for the Paraguayans to come back in this one. They might make, might be able to make some headway, cut it, get under 20 points, and then see what happens. But they've got a long way to go.
So Okapenta leading the way with those 10 points. You can see hitting the only three-pointer of the first half for Paraguay. Lucas Diaz that's leading the way for Brazil. So a lot of work to do for Paraguay if they're going to catch up here as the players come back out on the court. To get some shots up here. And uh, anyway, Brazil cruising inevitably, it feels like, towards a 2-0 start in the Americas uh, here in the qualifiers for the FIBA America Cup. And Paraguay 0 and 2, and perhaps their biggest games coming up, you know, games that maybe they would fancy their chances definitely against Panama. Now that Uruguay will also be a tough nut to crack, but here we are at halftime. Brazil in command. Well, some of the youngsters taking in the action tonight, their team, if they're pulling for Brazil, which I uh, doubt, their uh, Paraguayan team uh, trailing Brazil 58 to 25. And some of the categories, which will come as no surprise because of the, the way this game has been played and number of points that Brazil have. Brazil has scored 20 points off of 13 Paraguayan turnovers, 11 fast break points. So it's not as bad as it could, as you would have thought maybe it could be. But 16 second chance points, definitely 28 points in the paint compared to 10 for Paraguay. And 23 points from the bench for Brazil, just 10 for Paraguay. And the twin brothers enjoying themselves tonight. Future basketball player there.
So again, the last time this Paraguay national team made it to the FIBA America Cup 2011 and looking to snap that long streak. Three teams from the group will indeed go. So they're going to have to get some some wins against Pan, at least one win uh, against Panama or Uruguay. And maybe their best chance will be coming up when they take on Panama. But we shall see. I, th I still think they're going to be overmatched, way overmatched. So everybody's lined up, ready to go here for the second half. Just waiting for the, gosh, what is going on? Okay, that's some moisture they had to wipe up. And we are underway, 58-25 in favor of Brazil here cruising against Paraguay. They really open it up with a run at the end of the first half. And the whistle blows and a foul has been called. Lino with his passing, boy, it is his biggest strength, I think. The way he whizzes around the court, whips those passes everywhere. There is the reach in, and you can see he's uh, getting a little bit tetchy out there for Benitez. Ball inbounded to Adolfo, excuse me, Alejandro Peralta, but then he turns it over. Good hustle back by Okipinto. Okipinto, excuse me. Now into the corner. And Okipinto went up for the putback dunk, but didn't get the ball. Lucas Diaz has it. Cardoso stays in the game. Back to Aleno. Good pass, Lucas Diaz. And the three-pointer is good. I mean, the guy is prolific. He makes those shots like they're layups. 
18 points for Lucas Diaz. Four three-pointer of the game. Now Benitez gets to the baseline. Nice pass. Mercado goes in for the layup. Eleven points for Mercado. Bounce pass. Oh, look at the spin, Cardoso. He's got some game, doesn't he? He's only been on for a little while. He's already got eight points. Pass whipped inside. Mercado misses this one. And Jorginho gets it up to Lucas Diaz, who's got 20. If he'd been able to make that pass, could have been a layup. Diaz wasn't going to let it go. Living dangerously and able to get the shot off, but Peralta won't get it to drop. Now, Alenio hands it off to Lucas Diaz again and unusually misses. He's been good. Peralta again turns, passes it back outside, out of trouble. Good defense from behind Alenio, and the foul has been called. Santos comes in for Diaz, and they get a bucket from Mercado. Rodney Mercado getting it done tonight, plays for Olympia in Paraguay. Young man, just 24 years of age. Now, great steal, great hustle, Mercado, setting an example, not just on offense, but getting it done on defense. Peralta again, backs his way up, puts it up and in. Elinho decides to put it up, and boy, he doesn't shoot as much as his teammates, but when he does, he makes it. Just piles on the misery for Paraguay. How about that? First three pointer of the night for Franco Benitez. He has eight points. Behind the back pass, Alinho. Now in the corner, Cardoso. And flying in, Barbosa.
Dale Jr. Call it back in the game. Brings it out. And some wrestling down low. And the foul called on Marcio Santos. Well, putting up another three, and it's good. So Edgar Riveros joins the three-point shooting party. Back to 31-point deficit. They pass it around, Jorginho. Leans in, the Barbosa with the rebound. Frank man and oh look at the block from Cardoso on Jorge Sequeira Jorginho for three you can count that Just good timing, good anticipation, and timeout on the court as we look at Jorginho's latest three. Elenio with his assist. So a technical foul has been called on Franco Benitez, and he sits down. Now it's just a frustration of also a technical foul called on Edgar Riveros. So Paraguay clearly not taking kindly to getting blown out twice by Brazil, voicing some disapproval, wanting some respect. Rivera's gets blocked out of bounds by Jorginho. Puts it into Peralta's hands, who misses it from deep. The long rebound. And Rivera tries to make the bounce pass. Peralta picks it up. Another three attempt. And Brazil coming up on the 13-minute mark, 13 mark remaining. 
Now Alexi. Got a little bit too much hand checking there on Gabriel Galvanini. So he makes one of two. Brazil picking him up full court now. And well done, Paraguay. Breaking the press. They're ready for it. Riveros doesn't attempt it. Tries to run the offense. Oh. Good defense from Brazil. Good rim protection. Virginia to Paula. Looks like you put a little extra spin on that. Now quickly on the counterattack. And there they go. And finally, Segueta gets the layup. He's on the scoreboard. His first field goal, he had a point already from a free throw. Quick pass, Marcio Santos. Oh boy, that's a nasty fall. This is the first time <clears throat> that we've seen Ruben smile all night. And it comes when his player. So he was smiling when his player tried to dunk it. And fell on his well stomach. But he was okay. Lenny up applauding. Great, great leader. So Paolo. Great seeing him be a part of this national team program. Here is the pass, and it just gets away from Adolfo Lopez. Marcio Santos, short. I'd like to see a shooting contest with him, with he and Lucas Gias. And Suarez Wilson for a moving screen. Look at the passing from Elenio earlier and the Cardoso finish. But everything Elenio does is just so smooth. And here he is standing up and applauding his teammates. And that's the kind of guy you want on your national team. He can play and he's a team guy. 
So referees want to go and look at something. They're going to review something. Oh, no, they've called technical foul. I think on Adolfo Lopez. They're going to review it. Let's have a look. Oh. With, yeah, with the left elbow. Are they going to call this an sportsman like? Okay, so it's a coach's challenge, is what it was. They reviewed it. They have called a technical foul on the coach. <clears throat> I don't understand why they've called this. They seem somewhat surprised because he wasn't being overly animated. It's just kind of rubbing salt in the wound. He needs to hear. He needs to hear it from the referee why he's made the uh, why he's made the call. Anyway, technical. Just got to live with it. And you can hear the Paraguayan fans. They're getting a little frustrated. Let me brag at the line. Breu. This is the first. So it does make the second. And Brazil just kind of marching. They're going to get to 100, I would imagine. Final minute of the third quarter. Has not been an exercise of delight tonight. Jorge Mart Martinez missing it. And another foul called. So another chance to go to the line. Mercado not going to give up the layup. So here's Abreu again. Makes one of two, then the scrap for the rebound. Cicada goes crashing to the hardwood, and the foul called on Gabriel Galvanini. So 
Takata brings it up the court. Has to get rid of it quickly. Oh, traveling. Moves his pivot foot. First Friday night all around. We keep talking about it. You just got to try to draw some positives. I think they could play much better than what we've seen. Alain Juarez, but it's a really good team like this. It's, it's difficult. It's difficult to do your best stuff. Like I said, trying to take it all the way down. Oh, behind the back pass. And is this an offensive foul or what's going on here? Hold on. Okay, two shots for Gabriel Galvanini. So plenty of time here for Paraguay to get up the floor quickly. Or to get up the floor and score. Well, that's not going to work. Picking up the dribble. And they don't even get the shot off in time. And he made it. So it doesn't count. Eighty-one thirty-nine. Brazil in command against Paraguay. Ten minutes remaining. Seven more threes for Brazil. Eight more makes inside the arc. They're rolling. Well, it's more the same with Lucas Dias coming in and making threes. But it's the overall... Uh, play of Brazil, the passing, the movement, Alinho also hitting that three-pointer there. And there have been moments where we've seen some, some good work from Paraguay, but not nearly enough to make this competitive. So it looks like we've got another technical foul that's been called. And Alexi makes it. So that was on Riveros. I'm just making sure that wasn't his second, because if it is, he's got to go. And I think that's the case. So, yeah, it's his second technical foul. So he is ejected.
Here's an opportunity driving in. And Gabriel Galvanini whistle for the foul. So Martinez is going to the line. Paraguay 12 of 17 at the free throw line. Yeah, you got him with the body. So Rivera's night is done. He's played 18 and a half minutes. He had three points. He, that second, that technical gave him his fifth of the night. So he's going to cool off and this difficult exercise and playing this America's qualifier now an unsportsmanlike foul has been called. So Rias Diaz, uh, sportsman-like. Huh. So not only shot, it was an off the ball foul. Well, there have been a lot of technical fouls, unsportsmanlike fouls called on Paraguay tonight, and that's just evidence of how frustrating, how difficult this has been against a superior Brazil, which we knew it would be like that. And you don't like to get your noses rubbed in it in a couple of games the way they have, but that's just the reality of the situation. You still have to control your emotional discipline. Or maintain it. Alvinini missing it from deep. And flying in, Mercado gets another two. 15. He's going to leave this arena with a little bit of respect. Cardoso coming in for Galvanini. Alexi dumps it down low. They pass it to the corner. Daniel knocks down a three. Okay, so there's a, there was a foul on the play on, on Brazil, but the shot counted. <clears throat> Juan Miranda whistled for the foul. Oh, Virginia rejects him, has to put up a prayer right at the end. Alexi has it knocked out of his hands. Good job passing it ahead. Nice. That's our nicest bit of basketball we've seen tonight from Paraguay. They missed a shot. Nice bounce pass and nice finish from Mercado. Of 
Cardoso or Ferrazzo. Danilo Fazzato fouled and is going to the line. So Saketa's coming out and being replaced once again with uh, Juarez, who comes in as Paraguay tried to get to the finish line without giving up 100 points to Brazil, but I'd say it's probably not going to happen. Brazil's going to get their scoring mark. Run has yet to score today. Get a little frustrated with the fouls called on him. Well, great play after Martinez exits. They start play. Diego Barreto gets the ball, goes up. Scores, Cardoso whistled for the foul. Well, I like the fact that the coach of uh, Patagrai was coaching, coaching up his player, talking to him after he pulled him out, using this as an opportunity to get something out of this experience. Alexi misses it from deep. And another foul. This one on Occupante, Vincenzo Occupante, Pinti. Daniel again, and same result. I don't know who the shooting instructor is in Brazil, but he does a good job when you look at Santos, Daniel, and obviously Lucas Diaz. Wow, good tap in by Juarez off the Bruis miss. Okapenti. Taken all the way. Missing. Now a chance for Alexi in Brazil. Ferrazzo. Drives in. Fizarro, excuse me. And they get another three from Daniel. That's three for him. Under five minutes remaining. Daniel right on the verge of double digits. See if he can get there. In fact, he is. He's got 11 now because he had an earlier basket. Here he goes again. Bounce pass. Now chance for a breakaway. Okipenti and throws it down. 
Well, Daniel Ferreira is just 21 years of age. Basketball Without Borders team one, so clearly on the uh, NBA radar. Not that he would be drafted, but Basketball Without Borders is a place where they are uh, FIBA and NBA work together to develop the game, give young guys opportunities. Okay, Penty drives in. Tougher games will come when you look at it. Okay, Penty doesn't want to get another technical. So Brazil, their next game is going to be at home to Uruguay November 21st, and then they'll play at Panama on November 24th. So that's going to be a much different window for them. Obviously, they'll still be favorites going into those games. But they will be at home for both. Fellas struggling a little bit from the scoring standpoint. Ruan. Paraguay, meanwhile, will have their next two games at Panama. There you go. On November 21st, excuse me, at home to Panama. And then they will be at home to Uruguay. So on November 24th. So that's the next two opponents for each team. Okay, Penty missing it from deep. Is this the time when Brazil get to the 100 mark? Could be. If they take a three, you know, Alexi's gonna take it in and they're gonna get a dunk from Cardoso. Wow, Zinha. Brazilians have names. They're registered under, but then they also have names <clears throat> on their jerseys, which are often different. Carazzo, Carazzo for example, Elinio is what, they, what he's called. is very frustrated has not been a good night for him or Paraguay as they head up to the bench for a timeout So not too many smiles over there on the bench of Paraguay. But again, having been blown out in the first meeting with Brazil, I think we all knew that it was going to be a big ask for them to be competitive, although they were for a long stretch in that first half, trailing by 10 points. And then at the end of the first half is when things went off the rail. Hey, look at Edgar Riveros, at least over there taking some photos. Not to mention uh, Franco Benitez. So connecting with the fans. At least those will be some good memories uh, for both. And all went around the rim, didn't go down. Now they put it up again. And Barbosa Daniel gets it to the corner. 
And the follow is good. So at least Ron Miranda has got three points now. And Brazil have 101. Okay, Pente. Here's the lob. Well, that would have been sweet if Cardoso, if uh, Azinho could have done that. Cardoso, however you want to call him, here he goes again, and yes. He can take the alley-oop, and he can throw it down. Under two minutes to go. Or is missing from the baseline. Oh, good read, Okapente. And scores over Daniel. <clears throat> Alexi lobbing it up there for his teammate. So five fouls for Mikado could probably call him the best player tonight. We put around Sequero missing. Sequeira, excuse me. Now down low again. Passing it back outside. We're under a minute. And there's an explosive leap and dunk from Ron. Penty wanted to hit, go to 17 points, but it doesn't. And Alexi again drives in, hands it off to Daniel. But Daniel's ended up with a nice night tonight after this uh, little flurry of points. Ferreira, 13. Rubens goes to 2 and 0. Gets the hugs from all of the players including those he's going to be reunited with at Franca. Good game from Alzini coming off the bench and Brazil clinch a very convincing win. 108 to 53 Brazil defeat Paraguay for the second time. <clears throat> so in this America Cup qualifier, you can look at the numbers and just total domination by Brazil. Twenty-nine rebounds, forty-six for Brazil, twenty-nine for Paraguay. I mean, it was just across the board domination. Lucas Gias finished with 20 to lead all scores, but had he played more, which he could have, he could have easily had 30 or 35. Lucas Gias showing the heart sign to the camera.
We'll look back at the fourth quarter highlights. And again, you get a look and see how, how dominant this Brazilian team was. Ricardo gave a good account of himself, finished with 17 points. He led all scores for Paraguay tonight. He fouled out after 20, playing 24 minutes and change. And then Daniel got hot late, making some three-pointers. That was another bucket from Mercado. Fisato. No stopping this Brazilian team tonight. That was a good follow-up by Juarez. Then another three from Daniel. And I think this will be it. Okay, no, that was it. Okapenti getting out and getting the dunk with four and a half minutes. A few more plays. In fact, Lexi hands this off. And Mazzino dunks it, or Ricardo, so if you want to call him that. And another alley-oop for that man. He had a big game, in fact. 12 points, 7 rebounds, 2 blocks. Plays the game around the rim. And that's how it finishes. So the standings, 2-0 Brazil up at the top. Uruguay, 1-0, taking on Panama tonight. Later tonight, Paraguay have dropped to 0-2. They're currently in third with that extra participation point. And you can see that that table will be different uh, after the other game. Thanks for watching, everybody. 108-53, Brazil cruise past Paraguay for the second time in these qualifiers.